this this book is full of messages, really. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 But sometimes to find the right one is the That's important right. thing. Right. But uh, I was thinking about what I preached last uh, uh, Wednesday night at the church, and of course uh, uh, about what it really what it really meant, you know. That I went over into uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 24 and picked up there in verse uh, 12, I believe it was. And, uh, uh, you know, it talked about uh, when wickedness uh, abound, then the love of many wax cold. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, so I kind of talked about that a little bit. And, and really, in our day and time, uh, I, I don't know how you might feel about it, but I feel like there's a coldness that has hit a lot of uh, people right. that uh, have right. one time uh, had, a, had a red hot experience with the Lord. That's right. And, uh, but if you notice the uh, situation there, because when, when you get into Matthew 24, it's, it's talking about uh, giving a prophecy concerning the destruction of the holy city right. and and the temple right and of course uh, it also gives instruction to, to those that would hear how they might be saved right uh, how that they were to flee to the mountains and not return to their home and take anything Watch for that today there's a lot of false prophets yeah. and even false religions that are trying to enter into our land and it has affected a lot of people and uh, you know these things are to be considered and then he said what iniquity abounds ah, yeah. uh, you know it's, it's during that time that the love of many right. uh, which we should be getting hotter than ever before All right. but uh, the love of many is waxing cold, cold. And, and so when, when you think about that coldness, because I kind of illustrated just a little bit the other night, you know, about being cold and there's just something about it. Uh, you know, uh, when, you're, when you get cold, usually uh, your nose is going to get cold. And, and when your nose gets cold, it, it usually runs. Yeah. I don't know about yours, but mine does. <laughs> and then your ears are going to get cold yeah, right. and, and, and then your feet are going to get cold and brother with my feet and ears and nose get cold I'm cold all over yeah, right. you know but uh, thinking about that spiritually uh, what it's really you know telling us spiritually right. when, when we get cold in the spirit Right. We become uncomfortable. I don't know how you feel about it, but when I get cold, I'm uncomfortable. Yes, yeah. uh, I've stood outside, you know, and, and, and talked with the men that, uh, and, and just be freezing to death and just stand there and talk to them, you know, <laughs> and, and, and thinking, Lord, are they ever going to leave? Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. was so uncomfortable. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, what I'm saying is when you get cold in the spirit, you're yeah. going to get com uncomfortable in, in the service. Right, right, right. right. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Go ahead. You're going to get uncomfortable in, in the service when you're cold in the spirit. Because right. uh, your spirit just don't want to receive what is uh, being laid out. Oh, yeah, that's all right. 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 Thank you, Jesus. But anyhow, oh, when, when you think about these things, you know, there's a lot represented. I brought out a little bit about uh, the uh, the feet, you know, because the feet are for running purposes, but if they are cold and, and, and feel like a couple of blocks of ice, they're not going to be running very much and very good. Thank God. I like for my feet to be warmed up and ready to go. Hallelujah. When you think about the nose when it gets cold, when it gets cold to the point, then then you're not going to be, you know, able to sniff out what uh, what needs to be sniffed out in the spirit I'm talking right. about. Yeah, Hallelujah. 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 Hallel
sometimes. Yes, Not yes, everything yes, that goes yes, on is of God. Thank yes, God that those things that are God is what we want. Thank God to enjoy to just on fire and just really enjoy but all at the same time sometimes you'll have those that's just freezing that's to right. death that's right yes, yes, yes. they got cold in, in the spirit and there's a lot of things that I could mention that will cause that thing to happen right man a lot of things I could mention that will go like a prayer will cause it to happen Lack of interest right. in the service he is brought on because of coldness. Lack of attendance yes. in the service is right. brought on right. by coldness. Right. Getting right. cold and then getting lukewarm. And, and, and let me just bring out one other thing here. I realize we've got some other preachers here tonight. I don't need to see a clock, but anyhow, yeah, I do. <laughs> I, I don't look too far. Praise God, but anyhow. Uh, let me let me bring out another thing here. You know, I've stated that uh, when you get to a certain point of being cold, in other words, you're freezing to death. You're freezing. They say the next thing that will happen that you want to go to sleep, and you don't want to go to sleep. You want to stay awake. Right. Are you hearing right. me tonight? Yeah. Somebody hearing me here tonight? Yeah. You don't want to go to sleep. You want to stay awake. Yes, yeah, right. So you've got to, you got to right. do something to keep right. yourself right. awake. Because if you ever go to sleep, you're going to die. Uh -huh. right. 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 Oh, my God. Right. I'm afraid that's what's oh, happened oh, in the Pentecostal right. church. There's been a lot of people that have got cold and they are close to death. saying they say when you get so cold and you sit down you start beginning to get warm and then that's when you freeze to death but you know when we're getting cold and different he said he baptized us with the holy ghost and fire so we just need another dip of the holy ghost Come on. Amen. God's good yeah. to us. Ain't you glad Jesus loves us? Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's a little simple song children sing. But I'm so glad that Jesus loved me. And I'm so glad that God's got a plan. Yes, sir. You know, we have plans. You know, he put, the, uh, put Adam and Eve in the garden. He had a plan. That's right. But the devil stepped in and messed things up. And he had to come up with another plan. Amen. Sacrifices wouldn't do it. That's right. Hey, uh, the ox, the goat, the turtle doves, that wouldn't do the job. It just moved it up. So he said, I got a plan that will work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We make a lot of plans. We'll make an A and a B. Yes. Mm -hmm. Brother Riles, we say, if, if A don't work, we got B back up. That's right. But I'm glad the plan of salvation is something that's real, that's something right. you can feel, something that will work every time. It's not a taping off. It's an absolute uh, cleaning up, 
when you get salvation. Come on. Yes. I thought about when Paul and Silas, you know the story where I believe it was where they casted out that devil out of that woman following him. Yeah. And you say, man, that was well, it was it really she was saying the truth. These are men of God, but they was irritating. Yes. What they was doing yeah. was irritating the Apostle Paul. So he just turned around and that name's above every name just cast that. The devil out of her yeah. started right. the whole city upside down. That's right. Yes, That's right. Yeah. What with Paul and Silas in jail, you said, man, it, but you know that was God's plan? That's right. Right. Think about that. Hallelujah. God seen that jailer that needed salvation. Yeah. God's got a plan, but we need to do some reaction to God's plan. That's right. Right. And the Bible said they was cast in prison. And they, hey, I'm telling that man had a charge on him. If they get out, your neck is gone. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Well, did you know we got a charge today? Yes, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Right. Hey, folks, we got a job to do. That's right. That's, right. that's the plan that God said. For by the foolishness of preaching, God has picked to, to save souls. Yes, sir. I can preach it and be saved, and you can hear it. To be saved also. Come on, yes. But the Bible said they had them back in the third quarters or whatever. Four quarters, I believe it was, of soldiers yeah. to watch them. They had them strapped between. I mean, you know, they had them in a bad situation. But the Bible said about midnight. They may have done some reaction. Folks, if we're in the midnight hour right now, we need to do some action. We need to start doing some reaction. So at about midnight, uh, they begin to pray and sing psalms unto the Lord. Uh, and there came a great earthquake. Right. Right. Well, Ain't you glad Jesus loved you? Right. Ain't you glad he sent an earthquake? To your soul on, and got you to realize, hey, I gotta do something about it. Uh, the Bible said that every man bands was forever. All that they had there, if they had on their feet, they was loosed. When that jailer woke out of his sleep uh, and realized what doing uh, was going on, he knew the charge. Uh, and the Bible said he drew his sword. Yeah. And Paul said, "Do thyself no harm." Because we're all here. Folks, I'm telling you what. The devil thinks he's a wise old fox. But I read in the back of the book. Brother Lyle's trials. We're going to win. Hey, we're on the winning side tonight. I have no doubt in my mind. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when I want him. But I guarantee you, he'll be there on time. Hallelujah. Brother Wagner, you know what happened that that guard or that keeper of the jail, he realized the plan of God. And he said, what must I do to be saved? And the Bible said he took them home with him. He fed them. He washed their stripes. He said, man, i got a hard way to go. I'm telling you what, it's probably God's plan. Look what happened to Job. It was God's plan. What happened to Job? But he didn't leave Job. Hey, it looks very, very sad tonight at the situation right here tonight. This church should be filled to its capacity. I'm not talking about the sick ones. I'm talking about people that need to hear the word of the Lord. Folks, he says, in the last, there's going to be a falling away. You know what it is? It's a falling away from the truth of God. People can bust them in. Right. They got congregations, big, but they don't even have ears to hear. Right. I'm glad the Bible's in God's plan. Yeah. And he loved me so for the while that he said he came all the way from heaven and gave me plan of salvation. That's right. right. That's right. Yeah. One step, a scripture yes, there said he told his disciples, I need to go by Samaria. Well, he I'm glad he went by Samaria. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm so glad he said on Jacob 12. He had a little bit of conflict between his, his disciples, and we do that today. Right. Everybody don't see what they don't think what's going on, you know. Sometimes they think a preacher come in on a load of pumpkins. <laughs> I had somebody call me and they tell me about somebody started church. I said, Hey, I know all about what's going on. Don't worry about it. It's not gonna get out of control. Amen. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, and the Spirit of the Lord weigheth the deep things. Right. Yes. And you know, 
that woman that came to the well was a Samaritan. Had no dealings. Hey, she was a dog. She was an outcast. But Jesus went there because He loved that Samaritan woman and He loved the Samaritan people. And He said, I'm going to go by there. And He offered her something she could not turn down. I'm glad I came to church one night and God gave me His plan. It was something that was real. Something I could not tear down or turn away from. And she got excited. Right. I ain't seen very many people get the Holy Ghost and get excited. Right, right, right. You say, well, I have. I, are they still in church? Come on now. Hey, are they still in church? Still in church. Most of the time when they get it easy, they don't last long. Right. But I'm telling you tonight, God filled me with the Holy Ghost. I, I was there tonight, Brother Walker, away and got the Holy Ghost. He hooked everybody in church. <laughs> Amen. He wasn't looking who it was. He was enjoying. He loved God. He saw, hey folks, I'll tell you what, we need to put some blinders on us sometimes. Oh, I've seen a picture of them, a black preacher. <coughs> and he was expounding. They took it, and I guess it came off Facebook. One of my kids said to me, and I don't have Facebook now. <laughs> we are living by faith and not by sight. Sometimes we might need to poke our eyes out uh, because we're living by faith, not by sight. Did you know sight will get you in trouble? That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> God is real. It's so good to be here tonight. Even I'm, I really enjoyed what Brother Ronald said. Now, you know, think about it. I'm hot natured. Oh, and my wife is cold as a cucumber. <laughs> All the time. And she's over messing with the thermostat. Up and down. Up and, down. and I'll be sitting there and I'll say, what's that on? Oh, I run it up while I go. <laughs> Covers her head up. Her nose gets cold. Yeah. <laughs> folks, I'm telling you, that's what happened to our church right now. We got a bunch of cold folks. Uh, they need to be hooked up to, to the Word of God and they need to start open. Hey, did you know if you exercise and move around, you'll get warm? My wife said, I don't think his thermostat's right. <laughs> I said, what it's doing, what it's supposed to do, it don't come on when she wants it to come on. <laughs> but you know what, Brother Perry? She'd go outside this morning, stay about 30 minutes, come back in, she'd say, man, we got a warm house. <laughs> you know, if people would get in tune with God, they would find out there ain't nothing wrong with the church. Right. Folks, there's nothing wrong with the church. You say, well, I just don't feel what I used to. It's not God's fault. Hey, right. we need to get back close to, to the heater. Yeah. We need to get back toward closer to God. Because He'll warm us up with His Spirit. And I'm glad I got His Spirit tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Get him in the people of God. Come yeah. on. Amen. People Amen. love the Lord. Right. If, you don't, if you don't, she might be Better get love the Lord. Come you on, don't leave here. You got to have something on your mind. Yes, sir. You got to have something in your heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can't be everything else. Got to be the word of the Lord. Yes, sir. Right. We've been gotten by the word, and the only way we get saved is by the word. Yeah. yeah. Can't be saved without a preacher. Uh huh. Yeah. He can't preach just because he got a Bible on his arm to go down the road. He got to be a God called preacher. Come on. Amen. Not yeah. mama said, daddy said, preacher said, but he got to be called of God. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, the word of God says to name us. One of them for ease and Zion. Right. Come on. Just take a nap. The brother Wild about sleeping. A lot of people are sleeping, slumbering. Yeah. Now it's a bad time to be, because I don't know about you, I don't like getting woke up in the middle of the night and in a sleep with a phone call. No. I just got one last night, matter of fact, or this morning once. I was laying around there. And I, my phone rang, and I thought it was a alarm clock. What? I was trying to look around, trying to figure out what's going on. I was dazed, Sister Jenkins. I was in a daze. I wasn't awake. Right. Morning. Right. Get careful in a church. But I'll tell you, you go to sleep. You're not awake. You're not fully aware of what's going on. I said. And all of a sudden, somebody squeals out the back of the church. Woo! And here they go to. What the hell? <laughs> you missed the spirit of war. You got to be in tune. We got. Yeah. I thought it's when the disciples went out with the Lord down to the Gethsemane garden. Yeah. 
He knew what was happening. Yeah. His last days on this dirt were fixing to take place. Right. Wow. He fixed to leave here. Yeah. He concerned about contacting God, yeah. praying. He said, no, go out there with me. Go out a little ways with me. And he left two or three of them, Peter, James, and John, they went to sleep on him. Uh -huh. I'm going to go pray a little bit. When he prayed, out, come back, they just sleep. He woke them up. Can't you just watch one hour with me? Come on. They didn't know what to say. He went on back and prayed again and went back to sleep. He came back the second time, they still were asleep. Maybe I to pray the third time to sleep on those sleepers. Yeah. He said, but he right. said, temptation's coming. The flesh is weak, yes. but the spirit is willing. Yes. The right. spirit wants to move. The God wants yes. to move. The spirit That's wants right. to move. But sometimes my old second class don't want to move. Right. Yeah. If yours get that way, yeah. Yes. Flesh is the enemy of God. Yeah. It can't please God. Right. But we have to have the spirit. That's when the Holy Ghost comes in. That's yeah. where the Holy Ghost takes part. We must be born again, the Holy Ghost, the water of the Spirit. Water we the must spirit. have something alive in us. All right. Right. We yeah. must have something so put in the Spirit that it does it too with the glory world. Yes, yeah. sir. We can't it? get excited about, oh, uh, well, who won the summer, who won the Super Bowl, whatever. I wasn't interested. No, I wasn't either. I'm interested who, who shot the, who made the last foot or whatever it is, get the gold or whatever. I wasn't interested who won the ball game, yeah, the ball game, on. raise the back or, yeah. or point it or whatever. I'm interested in getting ready for large company. It ain't time to go to sleep. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, right. right. Hallelujah. We've got to be awake. Arise. Isaiah said, Arise and shout, for not out of the sun, and the glory of the Lord will come upon you. Yes, yes. sir. We've yes. got to be aware that the devil's a sly old fox. Amen. Yes, he is. He used to sing a little song that he had in Sunday school. The devil is a sly old fox, but to catch him and put him in the box, lock the door and throw away that key. Yeah. But you can't do it. You've got to get your heart, your key to your heart, go with the Spirit of the Lord and close to the world and what's going on out there. Oh, that's it. We can't let it run our lives. No, that's right. It don't matter what the world says about Mark. Sing that song we sung out over there. It don't matter what the world says. Ready or not, he's coming. Yes. Yes. Asleep or awake, whatever, the Lord's coming. Amen. And if we ain't on fire, remember God, we're not going to make it. That's right. No, that's no, right. Praise the Lord. But it'll right. rise and shine. Get excited about living for God. It ain't time to go, oh Lord, look what they're doing. I told somebody the other day, Sister Jenkins, I don't like what Mama's doing. I don't like ways for the country to what? He's my president, so you know that? Yeah. He's president of the United States. That's where I live. Yeah. I love America. Yeah. I love it. When people start talking about my country, I get upset. I'm a full blood American in my heart. Yeah. I'm a patriot. I believe we ought to be able to stand up and give salute the flag and, and pass it to the flag. Right. Take a man where we need them to be at. I mean, they stand up for our rights. And the Lord's yeah. coming. Lives in Psalms chapter 34, I believe it is, in verse number six. But I will say this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him uh -huh. and delivered him out of some of his trouble. He delivered out of all his troubles. Yes. And verse number 17 says, The righteous, the righteous cry, and the Lord heard them. And the and the Lord heard and delivered them out of all their troubles. Oh, yes. Psalm 46 and verse 1. That the Lord is our God is our refuge and strength and very ever present help in trouble. Oh, oh I thought about the sister saying prayer. My family stood there. But that's trouble. Yes. That's trouble. But God said, I am the refuge and the very present help in trouble. God's in your problem. Yes, he does. you got a problem, call on the main maker. He's God in your problem. Uh -huh. Yes, he is. Right. Right. No, he is. 
Daniel, how about that song that some while ago? Daniel's in the lion's den, brother. But he had God in his trouble. Yeah. Right. God didn't let him stay there. Surprise! Lion treated him all a piece of note. He put that lion look, hey, laying on his tail directed, and slap my eyes. Got a good rest. Yeah. Hebrew children. Yeah. It's a king. Hallelujah. We ain't bound that little image out there. We ain't bound, we ain't burning. Yeah. All right. God brought them through in trouble. Yeah, that's right. God is here tonight. Yeah. In your situation. Yeah. In no, your no, problem. No, no, no. Right. In your darkest hour. Go in ahead. your child of God. Got the Holy Ghost. Then for him, right. he's in your problem. And he'll bring you to it. And I was sitting in an easy chair the other morning. Sitting there with nobody else up. Uh, and I was thinking about the Word of God and kind of questioning the Lord about some of the things that is going on. And He's told me just as plain as He can explain. He says, take the message from the pulpit and take it out on the streets. Amen. Went to church that night, Wednesday night. And Brother Sellers, he got up and I hadn't said anything about it. And he got up and began to talk and said, we've got to get this message out of the church and get it out on the streets. Yep, that's it. Then I testified and, and I told him, I said, you just verified what the Lord told me, and He said, "Yeah, you just verified what I said." <laughs> but I want to tell you something, and I ain't putting down preachers because I'm just as lazy as the next one. Maybe a little lazier, son. But we got enough church, enough uh, preachers in Arkansas to fill about every church there is. No need for a church to be with, no need of a town being without a church. Did you That's know that? Right. Amen. All right, let me read just a little bit here. Galatians, the third chapter. It says, If ye there, if ye then be raised with Christ, seek these things which are above. Yeah. For Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. We, we're living in a in a troublesome time. Yes, we are. And I think brother uh, explained that very closely while going very carefully. But we go out on the streets and we see people lost and undone. We drive down the highway and we see people pulling in and out of the taverns. Then we go to church and we see three or four in church, half a dozen. We got a couple dozen here tonight maybe. But we're really not doing, I don't believe, what God wants us to do. Right. I believe God wants us to open the Word of God. All right. He says here, set your affections on things above. Yeah. Amen. God is what we need our mind oh. set on tonight. Yes, right. sir. Amen. Amen. Not the chili after supper or after church or, or something of that nature, but we need to forget about everything else tonight. To, amen. Except God and where we're headed. Yep. Right. The church is on its way out of here. Amen. And I believe tonight that there are people here that is ready to go when Jesus calls. Amen. And, and I want to be able to hear him 
Amen. When he calls my name, yeah. and he could be most any time uh, that he could call me out because I've done it, lived my allotted time and a little bit over, and I appreciate that. And I don't care if I live another 10 or 12 years, that'll be all right. But if I go tonight, uh, that'll still be all right. Yeah. All right. Amen. All right. And, and uh, he tells us uh, to seek the things uh, up above. Yeah. Right. Amen. And set our affections uh, on things of heavenly things. Uh, yeah. Amen. Look to what God has prepared for us tonight. He has prepared a place for All us. Right. Uh, he said, I'll go away and prepare a place. Uh, and where I am, uh, there Amen. you will be also. Yeah. Now, people are arguing about what we're going to look like and all that. That don't make any difference uh, what we look like, what kind of body we got, uh, if we can just make it uh, and there and be with God uh, throughout eternity. Uh, sometimes we live uh, uh, a good long life and I've been here for 77 years, and uh, but you know that's just a short time to eternity. Right. Yeah. That's not very long uh, to eternity tonight. And that's why we need to seek the things above. Uh, we need to look for Jesus Christ, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes, uh, amen. We need to quit, uh, amen, sovereign around, uh, amen, and worrying about the ch uh, uh, churches being empty uh, until we take the message uh, from behind the pulpit uh, and go out on the streets uh, and the highways and the byways. Uh, and and the Bible said, compel them to come in. All right. Yeah. There's enough people to fill every church in, in Arkansas tonight that is lost and undone. Probably some of them have never been in church. That's All right. right. Well, All right. I know it's their fault. It is their fault. But it might be our fault because we didn't let, uh, lead them into the church. I was over at uh, uh, the shop the other day where, uh, where I used to work, and they always ragged me over there. And the Baptist preacher, he was over there, and uh, me and him, we were pretty good buddies. And he, he, we worked together and talked about the Bible and, and all that. And the, my boss, that uh, was my boss, he. He, he talked about, he went to church and what was the church? And I says, there's just one church. Right. Yeah. All about yeah. Well, that, sh that shook up the Baptist preacher. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. I says, there's just one church. Yeah, it is. It's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. It's the church of Christ. If there is a church of Christ, we are the church of Christ. All right. All right. Not their doctrine, no. but the doctrine of the Holy Word of God no. is what is going to save us. This is what makes us yes. the Church of Christ. Yeah. 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 And the preacher said, the Baptist preacher said, Whoop, says there's another church. <laughs> I said, Where's it at? He says, John the Baptist. I said, John the Baptist didn't have a church. Oh, he did. He's right. crying. One is crying in the wilderness. Yeah. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Yeah. Follow him. And he said, You're right. <laughs> <laughs> said, you got me. But you know, I'm glad I'm in the church. Yes, amen. Right. I'm in the church. Right. I'm glad that I've been baptized in his name. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If I wasn't baptized in His name, I wouldn't be in the church. That's right. right. I wouldn't be in the family of God. That's right. Amen. Everybody That's that is in the family of, of God right. is named by the name of Jesus, Jesus. Christ. Yeah. They're Amen. called by that name. Yes. They're not ashamed of their father's name. Right. I'm not ashamed of my father's name here on the earth. <laughs> Amen. He's gone. He's been gone for a long time. And I can't remember every time that I've ever done anything, I hope, to embarrass the name of Marx. Amen. Because that 
was my family name uh, here on the earth. Uh, amen. And, and he he never done anything uh, to cause me, amen, to shame the family. Uh, and I'm telling you, uh, the devil ain't going to do anything tonight no. to cause me to shame yeah. the name yeah. of Jesus Christ. You know, the Word of God says that... Uh, if the eye shall offend thee to pluck it out, uh -huh. amen, it is better to enter into heaven with one eye than two. Mm -hmm. If the hand or arm offends thee to cut it off, it is better to enter into heaven than with, with one than two. Right. And I was thinking about how, amen, that the things that we have that are in our life, amen, that should not be. All right. Amen. As we, amen, look into the Word of God, amen, as it is also to me, amen, a mirror, amen, that I can look at, and it will show me exactly how I'm walking, amen, That's it will right. show me exactly how I'm dressing, amen, it will show me exactly how, amen, I'm talking. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Yes, it will show But I was thinking about how, amen, that the Word says to lay aside every weight. That's right. And every sin that so easily Easy besets us, us and let yes. us run this yes. race. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. And I was beginning to think how, amen, it is so hard to run a race when there's weights hanging along the side of us. Right. Right. And I can say, amen, that that weight is sin, amen, in one's life, amen, that is weighing one down. Amen. That is bogging them down, amen, to the point where, amen, they cannot run this race or they cannot walk. Amen. And I have enjoyed each and every preacher, pastor, uh, I, I look up to and I respect my elders tonight, each and every one of you. Amen. Tonight, if I can say that you are my mentors, amen, as I have been in the last 14 years, I have, amen, uh, kept a very close eye upon those that I know, amen, that is living the life, amen, before the Lord. And I tell you, church, that all. <clears throat> If we're going to live it, if we're going to make it, yeah. amen, that we have got to lay aside every weight, every sin, yes. so easily besets us tonight, yes. amen, amen, I tell you, when I gave up, amen, everything that was in my life 14 years ago before I ever came to the Lord, amen, I came to the old-fashioned author, and amen, I believe that Brother Marvin Marshall here tonight can, uh, Amen. Uh, I believe he might have been there many times when this old boy here was up at the altar singing for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But, uh, amen, when I got in, amen, I got in all at once because I tell you, if you want it, you need to dive in with both hands and both feet. Yeah. Amen. You don't need to get in just halfway. Amen. But uh, I was thinking about, about being sold out. Did my wife, she, sometimes she tells us, Tells me that uh, you need to work on us because I guess I'm falling short somewhere or another. I don't know. Amen. But I love my wife and I love the Lord more. All right. Amen. I, 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 I tell you, I love Him dearly. Before I came to the Lord, uh, my, my wife was my life. She was my everything. But I want you to know something tonight. Amen. That uh, the life that I have uh, living is serving the Lord tonight. He is my everything. All right. Amen. I tell you, church, tonight that uh, when we stand before God, Amen. Your wife, or your husband, your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister, your your your, your grandmother, your grandfather, Amen. They're not going to be there holding your hand when we stand there before God. That's right. Amen. We want to take account for for our own self. That's right, brother. That's right, brother. And God help us tonight. Yeah. Amen. To take heed. To the word of God, when the pastor, oh, Lord, when the preacher, Amen, is pouring their heart out. Come on. Yes. And when they are giving their all, Amen, yes. Amen. And how sometimes when we are in the house of God, Amen, and the pastor, the preacher, Amen, when they had to pump and prime up the church to, to get them to move and get them on fire for the Lord. All right. All right. Come, Come on, on, somebody. Yes, sir. I believe, Amen, that also. That when we begin to come to the house of the Lord, that uh, we shouldn't wait to get we get here, amen, to get primed up, pumped up, and fired up, amen. I believe the fire, amen, should be going. Right, amen. The fire should be kindled. All right, amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Come on, somebody. Yeah. 
Come on. Have you ever tried to put wet wood on a fire? Yeah. It doesn't work very good. Right, sir. Sooner or later, that wet wood will put out the fire. Yeah. Yeah. But I want you to know tonight, as I begin to share and tell those out there that are around me, even there's a gentleman today, an elder, where I was working and I was trying my hardest to get here. Amen. I got off work just a, just a little bit late and uh, and he said, where are you headed? I said, I'm going to church and we're having a fellowship meeting. Amen. We're going to hear some good preaching afterwards. We're going to have some, a chili dinner. And he had a little beer on his breath and, and had been drinking. And, and he, don't you know, sometimes those that are, amen, on the liquor or beer, whatever the case, amen, how they want to talk about the Lord. Yeah. Mm. Most, I, I said, I've got to go. I haven't got time for this. I'll talk to you later. But uh, one thing for sure that uh, the job that I'm, I'm, I'm at is not looking very well. But Brother Marshall, before I leave there, I attend. Amen. I'm obligated. Amen. I have a duty. Amen. Tonight we at church, we have a duty, amen, to, to witness and to preach this gospel. And before I leave that place, by the help and by the grace of God, I'm going to reach unto every single one that is there. Amen. I tell you, I've invited them to the church. Amen. And, and have you ever heard this before? When they found out that you are a preacher, well, I'll come when you preach. Yeah. Well, they won't come any other time. Yeah. Come on, somebody. I cannot tell you tonight how many times, amen, those has told me, well, I'll come when you preach. Yeah. Right. If you really want to come, you'll come. Right. Come on, somebody. But I love the Lord tonight. I appreciate Him. I thank Him for what I feel. All right. I thank Him for what He's done for me. I thank Him for saving me, for filling me with the Holy Ghost. Right. I thank Him for writing my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I want you to know something tonight as I was beginning to think how. Amen. Way back then. And I, I know you can think way back then when the Lord saved you. And when the Lord filled you. Amen. He put something inside of you. Amen. He, he trusted. Amen. He believed that you would take care of. Amen. That you would cherish for the rest of your, your days right. here on earth. Right. And I intend to be so. Right. Right. Yeah. Amen. I tell you, the landlord might take my house away. The car dealer may take my car away. My employer may take my job tomorrow. But there's one thing for sure. <laughs> what I have. What I have here with the Lord tonight. Amen. This experience that I have experienced. This plan of salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. And the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. My friend. There's no one, and not even the devil in hell tonight, amen, can rob or steal or That's take right. or destroy no that man. from you. That's Hallelujah. Right. That's right. Amen. It belongs to you. Amen. It belongs to I. That's right, right, brother. And I intend to hold on. Oh, yes. Praise to hold on. Praise hold on. on. My Lord, there is not no time for slack. Oh, no. There's not no time tonight, the days that we're living in, Just about to cut loose. If there's anything whatsoever it may be that's going to hinder me in my walk, my friend, I have not got time for it because it's not worth it. Right. It's not worth it. Right. Amen. Right. Eternity is too long to be wrong. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, God. It's going to take, amen, a close and a straight walk to make it tonight. That's right. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. My friend, if we are not where we need to be with God tonight, I want you to know that the enemy, he is out there to steal, kill, and destroy. I mean, he does not yes. care about how he has to destroy you, but he will. Amen. He's like a sly old fox. Amen. Just waiting to catch you. Amen. In that trap, to that snare. Amen. All right. And it's like one. Big old lion out in the jungle. He sees the wickedest prey that he points out and sees beforehand. Right. Then that's the one he likes to tackle. Yes, right. sir. Yes, sir. Yes. But I want you to know something tonight, church, that we need to be strong in the Lord Amen. and in His might. Yes. We need to gird up the mind of our loins. Amen. Tonight and put on the whole armor of God from the truth of God because, my friend, I tell you, if we'll hold on tonight, 
Amen. Amen. They were right. take us to place called heaven. Yeah. And as a brother has spoken tonight, my friend, that place that God had prepared for you and I, oh, yeah. we can make it. Yes, we can. Amen. We can make it. And those that endure to the end of saints shall be saved. Right. Amen. Lord bless you. We're getting to the scripture. It said, uh, the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against flesh. And I begin to think about it, Brother Bobby. Oh, how that's so true. You know, right. Brother, Brother Riles, we walk day in and day out. There's things that we want. You know, I ain't gonna lie, I've been thinking about getting me a new guitar here lately. My flesh is wanting a guitar. <laughs> but I can tell you, it's just as easy to keep the one I got and continue playing for God. It doesn't matter what kind of guitar I got. It don't matter how it sounds. As long as I'm playing it for God, that's all that counts. You know, I was thinking uh, the other day, I was looking out across the... A congregation, I don't remember what church I was at, you know. And I began to see people mingle after the church service, Brother Oz. And, uh, you know, we sat through the service and it was on fire service, a great message. I don't understand how somebody couldn't shout like, like, like you should, you know. But I, I come up and I just got to looking around, you know, after church. And I got to thinking, looking around. You know, everybody was talking, having a good time. And I said, well, God, how many of them vessels out there are full? They're all full, but what are they full of? <clears throat> you know, there's some full of darkness tonight. Sitting in the church, riding the pew straight to hell. Right, come on. Yeah. They want to dress up, Brother Bryce, and look like they're Christians. They want to walk through the town, walk through the, the workplace and say, Hey, I'm a Pentecostal. I'm full blooded. I'm Jesus' name. I'm down to the core, Brother Bobby. But you know, deep down on the inside, they're nothing but a dark hole. That's right. Oh, yeah, There's cobwebs in there. Yeah. All right. Dude. There's spiders hanging in the corner. Yeah. There's little demons. There's spirits. There's all kinds of stuff in there. Yeah. All right. That's right. Come on. It's out there. Yeah. Come on, brother. Preach. <clears throat> I'm, I, if I'm out of order tonight, forgive me. But I've been feeling since before the service all day. I've been thinking, Brother Rollins, and I've been expecting something great. <clears throat> this is a fellowship meeting we're having here. Yeah. Right. It means there's more than one of us. Right. There's more than one pastor in here. There's yeah. more than one saint of God in here. Yeah. Oh, right. I don't know what's going on in anybody's life to walk through them doors tonight, Sister Elaine. I don't know how your soul looks. God does. But I can tell you one thing. This Yo, isn't just a social gathering, gay man. This is a place of refuge. Yeah. I read somewhere the other day, the church is a refuge for the sinners, not a club for the saints. It's time for us to get to work. It's yeah. time for us to come on and just introduce myself. Hi, I'm Brother Josh, and I sit in this church, but no, I don't see it, Brother Marshall. Well, all right. That's right. That's right. Come I didn't come you. just to look nice, Brother brother Michael. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, come on. I can make some kind of noise, not a beautiful noise, but I can make some kind of noise on the guitar. But Brother Riles, that ain't why I come tonight. Right. Uh -huh. I come because there's something to be done tonight, amen. Yeah, come on. The flesh is lusting against the spirit somewhere. It's somebody's heart. But let me tell you, just as much as it is, the spirit is lusting against the flesh. What are you talking about? The spirit is looking for God. It's looking for a worshiper. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody needs something tonight, Brother Morris. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Like I said, I didn't come to introduce myself. All right. I come to preach. Usually we have a set preacher, but tonight we don't. The pastor said I like to hear everybody. Well, I'm going to give him something to hear. All right. I'm not going to give him any scraps. I'm not going to give right. him any jello. I'm right. going to give him some meat. Right. The Bible talks about you, you you drinking of the milk and then you drink you eat of the meat, brother. Brother Riles, there's a point in time Try. where you drink the milk and there's a point in time where you step up and say, I'm ready for the meat. Yeah, brother Bobby, right. tonight, I'm ready for the meat. Yeah. I'm not ready for somebody to tell me you're doing all right. I'm not ready to be patted on the shoulder. I'm ready for somebody to tell me what God's got in store for me. Well, it's five after nine. 
Got one more after me. After that, we're going to stay and eat some chili for the youth. And people are going to stand in here and talk about, you know, talk amongst themselves before they even go eat, Brother Bobby. So I think I can take up some time. That's right. <laughs> I don't have any notes. I hardly ever do. So if I ever say anything crazy, just let it slip on me. You know, as I tell people all the time, Sister Morris, I'm a Pentecostal. I was meant to be crazy. I was meant to be a little peculiar. People get to looking at me funny sometimes at work because I sing a little louder than the radio sometimes. I play a little preaching. I told the church before, but man, we got visitors, I'll tell y'all. Where I work at, right across the aisle, is a Jehovah's Witness. Now I got talking to him one day, I said, well, tell me a little bit what you're about. Tell me, tell me what you believe in. And he got to tell me, he gave me a little well, the resources to go look up. And, oh, well, good. And, well, I, I guess it's nice to have somebody that loves God. I walked back over to my area, and there ain't but about 10, 10 feet between us. Next day or so, I turned my radio on. I hooked some Holy Ghost preaching up. If you want to know who I'm talking about, I listen to Brother Holmes out of Little Rock. Listen to Brother uh, uh, Go There. For the least Stone King, you know, preachers like that, you know, etc. I turned it up as loud as I could. <laughs> I got to tell them myself, they listen to that old rap. Yeah. They listen to that rock. Yeah. Tell you what, I got to work in a big shop and I walk in the door and I can hear rock on the other end. Yeah. And so it's, it's about time we put a little God in it. Woo. So I went to work one day and I turned up some preaching, brother. Oh, hey. Turned up some Holy Ghost. I turned up some fire. Yeah. And I turned the lights on. I turned the fire on. All right. I, I, I went outside to get something. I come back in and one of the guys that worked beside him, you know, they run the same thing. Walked up. He said, uh, "What you know, you got old Dave over there scared to death." <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you talking about? I, I'm, not, I'm not following. He said, he looked at me, he, you walked outside, he said, I don't know what that guy's listening to, but he's listening to some crazy stuff. <laughs> I kind of laughed and giggled. He said, yeah, he, he was telling everybody, I don't listen to him, it's crazy. I said, no, we're not crazy. I'm just full of the truth. Go I'm ahead. full of Jesus tonight. I know that when I die, Brother Morris, I'll make it to heaven. Well, how do you know? Because God keeps putting me back in line. All right. Somebody told me one time, when you feel like you're doing something wrong, or, you feel like convicted about something, or whatever the case may be, when the devil's just trying to mess with you, you're doing something right. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Yeah. The devil stole my Bible, but little did you know, I got about four or five <laughs> more sitting in the house. I got one sitting on the back pew, and as soon as I get paid, I'm going to buy me another one. It ain't doing it no good. So I can tell you what, I think we can bind together. I think we can all agree tonight. That we can just stand, Brother Marshall, and agree in the same mind and the same accord that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Amen. He is the Almighty. Yeah. He's a ruler. He's the King of Kings yeah. and Lord of Lords. He's the Creator, the Physician, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Hallelujah. And I believe that we can stand and we can tell that old Satan to get under my feet. Right. Come right. on. Yes. I believe we can jump on his head a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I don't see a bunch of people running the aisles all the time, but if they do, don't think they're crazy. They just run it on top of the devil. That's right. The Come devil's on. run them over enough. It's time for you to run the devil over. That's right. All right. Yeah. This ain't a club for the saints. Brother Morris, this is where we come to get what we need. All right. All right. Yes. I, I love God. Just raise your hand and say, I'm ready. All right. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the answer. Yes. Yes. Amen. He's the healer. Yeah. You see, come get him. Yeah. Bible says, call upon the elder. Right. I may be a little uh, weird or whatever you want to call it, but I believe that if you're a Christian, or you proclaim to be a Christian, and the first thing you're going to do is go to the doctor, you're doing something wrong. Believe that. What happens to the part in the book of James where you go to the elders? Elders. Right. Where you be anointed. Where you be prayed of. What happened to that, Brother Bryce? Um, We're growing up in a generation that don't believe in that. That's right. right. 
Come on, they, it. they got a church full of Come 500 on, people, and not a one of them know who Jesus Christ really is. Come on. Come on. And uh, I was sitting at Come and Go actually, and I was getting ready. You know, I was excited. We were coming to your place. We we're going to have a New Year's watch service. I was thinking, well, God, what am I going to say when I get there? And I looked up out of my truck and looked up and I looked at the sign on the gas station. And said, Come and go. I got to thinking about it. There's so many people that pulls in. They'll get gas and they'll go. They'll come in and get something to eat and they'll go. My goodness, even teenagers pull in just to talk to each other. Then they'll go. But when God comes, He's there. Yeah. He ain't never left me, Brother Morris. Amen. Somebody said a while ago, and I couldn't feel Him. It's because I was doing something wrong. That's right. right. God's never changed. Right. Heard somebody say one time, this thing's worked for the last thousand years. All right. Ain't nothing wrong with the way. Ain't nothing wrong with Pentecostal. Ain't nothing wrong with being apostolic. Right. What's wrong is the people sitting in the pews. All right. All right. All right. All right. I just want to let somebody know God's not looking for somebody to warm a pew. No, sir. No way. God's not looking for somebody to leave right. footprints in the carpet. Right. Right. He's looking for somebody to step on out of the comfort zone. Come on. Yeah. If you used to praying over here and you ain't feeling nothing no more, how about you go to the Lord. other side? That's it. Come on. If you know me every now and then, I'll go from praying right here before service. I'll pray right there in one week. For three weeks later, I'll probably be back there. And then I'll be right here. I'll be up there. I'll be all over the place because I don't want to get comfortable. That's right. Come on. I'll tell some of my buddies that are fixing to get married, I'll tell them, say, look, you think you're in the best shape of your life now where you're true. Because when you get married, you're going to get comfortable. Brother Morris, I was 100 pounds lighter when I met my wife. <laughs> well, y'all think it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I want it too. I laugh at it too. Yeah. I told him, I said, but you know what? You used to working out all the time. You used to exercising the muscles. You used to trying to eat healthy. You know them. You know them boys are. They're out there trying to pick up girls. They're out there trying to clean up their trucks and they can go driving, and the girls saying, "Well, that's a nice truck." Yeah. Better watch out because when you get married, she starts cooking good. You ain't working out no more. You got her. You can't let her go. You can't get rid of her. My daddy used to tell me every now and then, he said, I ain't letting your mama go. It costs too much. <laughs> hey, Amen. So you stuck with it. So eventually you're going to quit working out. Yeah. You're going to quit eating healthy because if you eat healthy and don't eat her food, you're going to upset her and you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> you and that couch are going to be best friends. <laughs> and the next thing you know, you gain weight. You don't like to get up. You don't like to go nowhere. I went and played basketball last Saturday. Let me tell you, it was all I could do for an hour and a half. <laughs> Worked out this morning, my arms are sore. But if you get that way in, the, in God, you gonna lose out. All right. All right. Brother Bobby said it. My wife told me last night, said Brother Bobby said something. I remember you saying it in your first sermon in. I love it, Brother Marshall. We gotta exercise the faith. Right. 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 We gotta pray a little bit. Yes. yes. We gotta fast. Right. Yeah. I think about fasting, that's them heavyweights. Only the strong can do it. You're strong if you're in the will of God, amen. Now exercise the faith. I love God. 
Amen. I'm thankful. Thankful for His blessing. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. Thankful I got to be here one more night. There's a purpose for everything we do, Brother Marshall. All yes. right. I'm going to get out of the way, but as y'all go your own ways tonight, go back to your churches Sunday, tomorrow night, whatever the case may be, just remember that the flesh is always lusting against the Spirit. That's right. right. All That's right. But I can tell you one thing, the Spirit will overcome. Yeah. God will overcome. The devil knows he's already lost the battle. That's why all he's doing is just continuously crying at you, trying to get you, because he knows where he's going. Right. He knows what he had. That's right. his loss. Right. He made a mistake. You don't have to pay for it. That's right. That's right. right. You can stand up and say, I refuse to live this way any longer. Come on. Right. Amen. I refuse to be a drug addict. Right. right. I refuse to be an alcoholic. Come on. Right. I refuse to be a slave to depression. Right. I refuse to be a slave to Satan. Right. I tell you what, I refuse to do anything wrong. I believe I'm going to stand today. I believe I'm going to accept it. I believe I'll repent. I believe I'll be baptized in Jesus' name. I believe I'll receive the Holy Ghost. I believe I'll live for God. And I believe I'll go all the way. All right. Why is your way to destruction? But no. This is your way. All right. Hallelujah. Praise. Praise God. Thank you for your time. Praise the Lord. Keep this thing rolling. Sitting here over here thinking, uh, Brother Morris kind of stepped on, uh, stepped on what I was thinking about. Uh, let's think, I've been reading in Luke chapter 19, and I know a lot of us have heard this story several, several times and about Zacchaeus and, and uh, how he made haste in, in the house with Zacchaeus. Jesus came and he passed through Jericho. And he was coming through town, and Zacchaeus ran through the town. He ran up into a sycamore tree, and he hollered out for Jesus. Come down, Zacchaeus, because today I will abide in thy house. You know, and then you read on down a little bit further, and this is what catches my eyes. And, and Brother Morris, the reason why I said he got on it was because the people who are the ones that are most willing are the ones that the people won't go after. The people in the church will not go after the ones that are willing. They think, oh, well, the ones that are over here, they don't care. I'll go after them. No, go after the ones that are willing. But you know, I read on down and it says in verse, I believe it's 8. No, verse 7, it says, And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be with a guest with a man that is a sinner. You know, I, I, I held these drumsticks up here for a minute here on and, and Dylan asked me, he said, what are you doing with them? I said, because I want to show you something here in a minute. All three of these sticks are broken. And yes, I'm a drummer, and most of y'all know that, and all of you know it now because I played tonight. But these sticks are broken. They've been beat. They've been battered. They've been drunk around up here. They've been slung around. They've been hit up on these cymbals. And you know, you think about these people say, well, drummers go through sticks all the time. No. But when I think of these sticks, I think of a broken soul, Brother Bobby. I think of somebody out there that was broken a time or two, that was drunk through the mud, brother. And now I think about every time they got a little bit more beat, they got a little bit more ran around, and they did all the drugs that they was on. They got thrown around a little time or two from here to there. That's right. They were beaten. They were broken. They were battered. But somebody took them in. Somebody took a chance. I took a chance, and Brother Josh, you took a chance on this one. You took a chance by putting tape around it. You, you took a little bit of time, and you medicated it. You, you took a time, and you, you said, hey, I'm going to pick you up. I don't need that right now. I'm going to pick you up off the ground. I'm going to take my brother, and I'm going to pick him up when he's down. Even if you're a sinner, I'm here for you. Amen. So many times we sit around in church and we get to thinking, well, oh, you're just here for this and you're here for that. No, I'm not here for a show. I'm not here like Brother Josh said to entertain. I'm not here to play the drums. I'm here because I'm here to serve the Lord. I'm here to do a will for God. I'm not here to entertain. I'm not here to play games. I'm here for the will of the Lord. Yes. I don't know about you, but I came for something else. I told about it here a while back to the church. 
But here's the thing. Whenever I was in Texas, I did one of two things the whole time I was down there. And Haley is my witness because she's my wife. She knows this. Me and a guy in the church down there named Brother Allen, we got out. We walked the street. You said that nobody would get out and be willing to do it. But I'm telling you, brother, whenever I did it, I was scared to death. I walked out the church doors that night, and me and Alan made a note. We're going to do this one way or another. We're going to do it together, and we're going to get it done. We're going to knock on the doors. We're going to walk these streets. We're going to be there with the beaten, the battered, the broken, the spit on, the ones nobody cares for. I don't care if you got a million tattoos. I don't care if you got piercings in every year. I'm going to tell you, God has a need for you. God has a deal for you. He's got something greater than what you've got on this skin. He's got something greater than what you got in your ears. He's got it here for you today. Take a chance on the broken. Take a chance on the battered. You sit here and look at this. I want to pass this around. I want you to see these. These are broken. These have been beaten. They've been battered, Brother Marshall. Yeah. They're broken. They're useless. But to me, as a drummer, as a musician, what do I see? Brother Josh, you see it too. Hey, these can still work. Let's throw a little tape around them. Let's get them medicated up a little bit. Doctor them up here. They're useless to others. What's useless to somebody else that's not willing to take on that responsibility and that role, I'm willing to take it on. I'm willing to step out. Me and Brother Josh, Brother Josh, we've done talked about this. We're going knocking on doors. You've got to go after the willing. And it's time that we take the broken, the beaten, the battered, and show them a chance. Tell them, hey, I, I, know you're, I know what you want. I know what you're needing. You have something in there that God says he was willing. He's wanting it. It's time to pick up the broken. Time to pick up the broken pieces and say, hey, I'm here for a reason. I'm here to show the broken that God has something greater. It's time to be in the will of the Lord. I don't know how many times a lot of you may sit around and you think, well, he's been here, been there, been here, been there. Well, I got something to tell you. I've been grounded. I've been rooted. And I've been planted into this thing. For 24 years now, brother, I, brother Riles, he pastored me for 18 years until I moved out on my own. I did my own thing. But you know, God had a plan. He planted it. He planted the seed. He plowed the field. He stepped on my toes a time or two, and he could tell you. Yeah, every time I went over to his house, I tell you, I've got a paddle from him. And it don't feel good. But you know, the brokenness is what sowed that seed.